Hi, this is Devorah Yacht with Redirecting, and I'm going to be sharing a very interesting clip with you. It involves a cop and two young black males. Now, usually when you hear that combination, it doesn't end well, but in this case, it was quite different. I'm going to go ahead and roll this short clip, and I will be back to give you my two cents. Fear and gratitude, those are just some of the emotions an Ohio mother is feeling after an officer had an encounter with her son that could have taken a deadly turn. Columbus police responded to a call from a couple of young men with a gun. Saturday, an officer stepped out of his patrol car with his weapon drawn. That's when an 11 year old suddenly pulled out what turned out to be a pellet gun to drop it on the ground. The gun broke into pieces, revealing to the officer that it wasn't real. The officer's body camera captured his lecture that he gave to the boys. Take a listen. Do you think I want to shoot an 11-year-old? Do you think I want to shoot a 13-year-old? I could have killed you. I want you to think about that tonight when you go to bed. You could be gone. The boys did not get into any trouble. One mom says that she is thankful for the officer's actions and hopes the encounter will encourage her son to continue to come home safe. As you see, in this case, this encounter ended well. Um, there were some things that were said in the encounter that I wanted to kind of highlight, however. Um, I'm glad that things ended to where there was not a call to the parents that these two young men had been shot and killed. I'm glad that it didn't end that way, but I want you to pay very close attention to some of the wording of the cop. Um, I noted that when he made his first reference to one of the, um, the children, he, he called, he said, boy, and then he made the correction and said, young man, the next time around. If I remember, I will put the link to the full video in the description area, but I wanted to make that notation there. It's almost as if he caught himself. He referenced him, boy, and then he said, young man, the second time around. And so you have to understand that there's always going to be a mindset there. You see, there is always a mindset there. And he made reference also, the cop made reference to um, a lot of young men around the country being killed for this. Um, I wanted to kind of talk about that point as well. Um, if we are being honest, if this country is being honest, who exactly is he referring to when he says people are being killed for this very thing? Our people, you see. Um, I don't think I've heard of any cases yet where a young white teenager was killed, 12 years old, 11 years old, 13, 14, 15 years old, was killed by a police officer for brandishing a BB gun or a plastic gun or any type of toy gun. I don't think I've heard of any. Now, if there are such cases, um, we're not hearing about them. But we do hear constantly the stories of young black males who in some cases don't even have a toy gun. They can have a wallet or um, what someone thinks to be a gun, a rock, a bottle of soda, uh, anything, you see. And so we've got to be realistic here. It's getting to the point we're talking about these racial subjects. It's just getting very tiresome. I do this because I want to keep my people informed and I want to keep you awake. I don't want you to fall asleep and not realize where you are. The Bible clearly tells us that we are in the land of our captivity. So we have got to remember that. It's not my favorite thing to talk about. I would like to talk about tiptoeing through the tulips family, but that would be a disservice to my people. So from time to time, we could talk about tiptoeing through the tulips. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, for those of you who love your, your uh, frequent visits to La La Land, um, we'll talk about those things from time to time. Um, I don't like to talk about the negative things, and some, some of you don't like to hear all the negative things, but in a world that is as crazy and chaotic as the one we live in, you have got to keep people on their toes, keep them awake. You hear the sirens right now? Who knows what's going on? It's probably a fire. But um, again, that's an indication that something is always happening. And so for that reason, me and many others want to keep you informed on what is going down in the hood and around the world, right? We've got to be realistic. But again, I'm so grateful that this one ended well. The young men were very polite. But I got to say this. Another part of this story I wanted to focus on too. 
is our people have got to wake up. Mothers and fathers, grandparents, aunts, uncles, you've got to wake up. Older siblings. I saw one video where an older sibling really just lit into one of his younger siblings for doing something he had no business doing. We all need to step up to the plate and say, look, this is how things are going to go down in the hood. If you see something that is out of balance, we should be able to pull a young person aside or go talk to their mother without expecting some type of confrontation with them. You see, that is one of the issues we're having. We don't want to check our own. We don't want anyone telling us what to do with our children. If someone says to you, look, maybe you shouldn't let him play with the toy gun. You, we shouldn't expect the rolling of the head and the rolling of the eyes and all of this stuff and all the attitude that you get with it. We should get gratitude. There should be gratitude if your neighbor over here tells you that maybe it's not a good idea for you to allow your, your young son to walk up and down the streets with a toy gun. These are the lessons that we are not hearing in the hood. And maybe if some of these churches that are collecting all of this tithe and offering and all of this other stuff would spend more time teaching our people about what is really happening versus all of this season, harvest, breakthrough, favor, and all this other nonsense, these concerts and these mega gatherings and this preacher coming in town, that evangelist coming in town. Look, oh, we're going to have a good time tonight, saints. If they would spend less time on that stuff and start to educate the people on the real world, may, the real world, maybe our people would begin to wake up faster. <sighs> yes, family. Sometimes it feels like you're beating a dead horse. But the Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. That's right, their wicked ways. He says, then he will hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. But it seems like the ball is in our court. You got to turn from your wicked ways. And that's the thing that people just don't want to seem to want to do. Everyone is happy and content in their nonsense. And so this is why we continue to hear reports of our young people dying in the streets. Until we take this stuff serious, we will continue to see these things. So again, that mother in this situation, I believe that she should have did better by her son. There's two boys there, I don't know if they're brothers or not, but those mothers should have did better by their sons and being informed that it is not a good idea for young men of that age to engage in that type of activity, walking up and down the street with toy guns. Okay, family? Enough said. I'm out.